everyone, me again. Welcome back to Eximedia Rex. So today we're going to be talking about why your gel nails aren't lasting as long as they should do and what you can do about it. For those of you who don't know me, hi, my name's Amelia. I'm a full-time content creator here on YouTube. Uh, I live in the Midlands in the UK, but I am also a trained nail tech and I have a number of different videos on my channel talking about how to do your own gel nails at home, along with other handy tips for nail art, how to get neat cuticles, etc. So if you haven't seen any of those videos, please feel free to subscribe and check them out. But I get so many DMs over on Instagram with people trying to troubleshoot why their gel nails aren't lasting and I'm finding that I'm asking the same questions over and over again and the same problems are cropping up again and again so I thought it might be really handy to put all those questions and solutions in one video so you can sit down tick them off one by one and make sure that you're doing everything correctly hopefully your issue will be solved in this video but if it isn't please do feel free to leave a comment down below or drop me a message over on Instagram and I will see if I can help Okay, so the main problem I see in regards to gel nails coming off or lifting really early is the fact that people are going over uh, the cuticle or flooding the side walls. The whole point of gel polish is that it creates a really tight seal between the polish and your nail bed. However, if you are painting over the cuticle, which is the little uh, rounded bit where your nail meets your finger, if you're painting over the skin, either there or down by the sides, which is what we call the side walls, then there's not gonna be a proper seal between the gel and your nail. And over time, water and maybe bits of your hair, things will get underneath the gel and start to lift it. This is one of the reasons why we go on and on about not touching the skin with your product when you're painting your nails. It's not, it's one of the reasons, but it's not the only reason. The main reason is that it can cause um, contact allergies, it can cause chemical burns. It's really, really important that that gel polish doesn't touch your skin. But apart from the safety side of things, it is the number one cause for lifting. Now I've actually got a video on how to paint perfect cuticles every time and my technique for making sure that I avoid that area. But if you are struggling still to get that uh, clean edge and not go over onto your skin, then try to leave a little gap between uh, your cuticle and the polish and also a little gap down the side as well. And every time you do your nails, you can try and go a little bit closer each time. I think we are bombarded online with these absolutely pristine, perfect photos of nails with the Russian manicure style where the gel polish goes right up to the skin and you genuinely can't see where the gel finishes and the cuticle begins. Um, that is an absolute skill. It's also a completely different technique as well to um, how the majority of us paint nails. So please do not feel like you have to go that close to your skin. It's going to be damn near impossible, especially when you're just starting out doing gels. So don't be afraid to leave a little gap down the sides and at the top until you get the hang of it. The next common problem I often see is that people just aren't prepping their nails properly before they start popping the gel on. So it's actually really important to dehydrate the nail bed as much as possible because our nails have natural oils in them that can uh, stop the gel from adhering as well as it should do to the natural nail bed. So as a general rule, you wanna start off by buffing your nails with a buffing block, not a hard grit file. Please do not use hard grit files on your natural nails, you will damage them. Um, but just give your nails a gentle buff over and then wipe it with a lint-free wipe and also a dehydrating solution, either with like a prep and wipe solution that you may get in your gel nail kit or with pure acetone. And what this does is it strips the natural oils from the nails and it also gets rid of any dust or any fibers that might be on the nail bed. Basically anything that's gonna get between your natural nail and the gel, and again, stop you from getting that perfect seal. Another thing people often find is that sometimes their gel polish is chipping at the edge of the nail. And one way you can avoid that is by capping your nails. Now I actually go over this and show this up close in my how to do gel nails at home video, which I'll leave a link to down below. Um, but essentially you run the polish over the free edge of your nail, not just on top of the nail, but over the free edge as well. And again, that helps to give you a seal. It can be a little bit tricky, especially if you've got shorter nails like mine, but again, I'll show you some techniques in the other video of how to do that. So always make sure that you are capping your nails. Application is also really important. So you need to make sure that when you're popping your polish on, it is in thin, even layers. I see a lot of people going in really quickly 
with a lot of polish because they want to get that even coverage with just one sweep of the brush um, and it doesn't always happen that way depending on your polish depending on the color sometimes you're going to need a good few coats for it to build up and get that perfect finish so do make sure when you're applying your polish they are thin coats and they are also even as well because if you have a thicker part on one part of the nail and a thinner part on the other that's going to be harder to cure than that one you might end up with air bubbles and again they can start peeling so thin and even coats for application it's also really important to make sure that you're using the right lamp the right products and you are curing for the correct amount of time. For example, if you have a UV lamp instead of an LED lamp, that's totally fine, but you need to make sure that you're curing for the right amount of time because UV lamps in general tend to take double the amount of time than an LED lamp takes to cure the same polish. And don't forget, some gel polishes are different and can only be cured in an LED lamp. So if you're using an LED polish in a UV lamp, that could be causing issues as well. As a general rule, we do say to try and keep to the same brands for your polishes, your top coats, your base coats and your lamps just to make sure that everything is working properly um, and you're not missing anything or doing the wrong thing. And last but not least, don't forget general wear and tear on your nails. So if you are somebody who constantly has their hands soaked in water, um, that is going to cause gel polish to lift a little bit quicker. So if you're a hairdresser or you do a lot of washing up or you spend a lot of time in water or in the bath, they are going to affect the longevity of your nails. Also potentially certain cleaning products could cause problems. So if you think that's going to be affecting you, then wear gloves that might help protect your nails and make them last a little bit longer. So to recap, the main troubleshooting areas seem to be making sure you avoid the cuticle and the side walls when painting your nails, preparing the nails properly, making sure to dehydrate and clear the nail bed of any kind of dust or debris before you start painting, cap the edges of your nails as well to make sure that everything is perfectly sealed all the way around, even application, make sure that you are using thin and even layers as you are building up your colour. Don't go in too quick, too fast. Make sure you're using the right polish with the right lamp and you are curing for the correct amount of time. And finally, be aware of the lifestyle factors that can affect the longevity of your nails. Wear gloves where needed. But hopefully this video has helped you troubleshoot why your gels might not be lasting as long as they should be. Of course, if you still have any questions, please feel free to leave them in a comment down below or come and follow me on Instagram and drop me a DM. If this has been helpful in any way, please give it a giant thumbs up. Uh, consider subscribing for our other videos. And yeah, just thank you very much for watching and I will see you again soon.